Good afternoon. You are looking live at Hudson Fields Hazen Union High School in Hartford, Vermont as your Hazen Union Wildcat boys play host to the U32 Raiders today. Lance Hall with the call for HCTV Channel 1080 on your dial, streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Leaf on camera, our first attempt at streaming a live soccer game to y'all. So anybody that happens to be flipping up on Channel 1080 right now, welcome to the game. Sponsors today, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. They support Hazen Athletics. The Hardwick Village Restaurant, 472-5701, breakfast all day. And Calderwood Insurance, 472-5517, service and protection since 1979. Boys come in with a record of 2-1. and one. They opened their season uh, last week here at home against Fairfax, 1-3-1. Went up to Harwood and lost three zip there, so their record is at one and one. I thought I had the U3. Oh, U32 is two and one, I believe. To the best of my knowledge, U32 comes in with a record of two and one. Next game will be this coming Friday, September 17th, right here at home against North Country. Your Hazen Union Wildcat boys in an action then again. And uh, girls will be on next week hosting Enosburg. Referees for today, Roland Billings and Brian Irwin. Did I say Leaf on camera? Antec. Antec. So we're going to go Antec as well. Opening tip just moments away. Nice day for soccer. Got some warm temperatures, a little bit of cloud cover, a little bit of a breeze that will be blowing uh, to the Raiders' advantage right now. I was actually coming, almost kind of coming at us, so coming almost cross field. I have a pen leaf. I have my program. I have some knowledge of what's going on out here. I use that term very loosely. Referees concur for a moment about something. Not sure what's exactly going to happen here. Excited to bring this game to you live. There is no finer place to watch a soccer game, I think, than right here, Hazen Union High School, Heart of Vermont, Hudson Fields. <laughs> and I'm telling you, we're going to tip right off. There we go. Boys. Looking to make something happen. Drop it back. Play it up ahead. Riker. Well, that was moving that one up. And I took the sunglasses off too soon. Here comes the sun. Or so the Beatles say. Action in the middle of field. Both teams sort of testing each other out here. Ball up through. Tyson Davison. Looking to break on that one. Couldn't quite get there. In the net for Hazen, Tyler Rivard. And for U32, it is A.J. Moore. And I know it's him because when I walked behind the net, I said, number one, are you A.J.? And he said, yes. I said, thank you very much. I want to give you full credit for anything that you do today. Shot in. And we're going to have a goal right there early. We'll try and get a number. I believe was it... Uh, I'm hearing the name Noah called. Number 16, Noah Cops go. Was that who got the goal? Not even a minute gone yet. U32 jumps out to the 1-0 lead. And we're going to give that to Noah, the crowd favorite, thus far for the U32 Raiders. Not the start that uh, Coach Allison Parody wanted for her Wildcats. U32 Raiders, coached by Mike Noyce. Coming across. Tyson, I think, is going to get called for an offsides, maybe. Kick up, ball back in play. Over here to the near side. Rory McLean. There's a soccer name for you. 
Rory McLean with the throw in. Lincoln Mitchett back to play defense against Shiloh Weiss. Rory McLean. Drop pass. Kale Humke way across field. Hits the player right in stride. Shot. That was Alex Keene on the other side. Wow. That was like long pass right on his teammate's foot. These guys are sharp. Now we have the always scintillating goal kick to put the ball back into play. There's got to be a better way to do this. I mean, might as well have a coin flip as to have a goal kick. I am not a fan of the goal kick. It's boring. Nothing boring other than that, though, about this game. Raiders on the attack. I think the Hazen defense is going to have their hands full with this team. Pinpoint passing. Mitchett blocks out Finn O'Donnell. Ball up midfield. Rolls out of bound. Red throw. Riker Ouellette. He is the quarterback of the Wildcats. Chunked out by the Raiders. That wasn't a chip, that was a chunk. Rivard scoops up. T-Rex, Tyler Rebard, high, booming punt. Carries three quarters down the way, down the field. Tyson gets a foot on it, going the wrong way, though. Turn around. Finn O'Donnell up, all out. Lincoln Mitchett with the throw. Headed out with authority by Dylan Hinchcliffe. Hinchliff, excuse me, Hinchliff. Or life. I will apologize early and often and in advance for butchering any names that I butcher today. Humpke moves up through, taken out by Dan DeGrosselier. Mitchett gets the chest on it, moves it up again. Here's Reed Keeler. Can't get nothing going. McLean back there, tough. Handball. And I did not hear one fan beat the referee to the call on that one. Awesomeness from Roland Billings. Any referee that can beat the crowd to the call on a handball to me is stellar. A.J. Moore. Rolls it up through. Ball ping pongs around Keeler. That's Elliot Rosenthal trying to advance the ball for the Wildcats. Throw in McLean. Humpke trying to get the turn. Work against Tyson, I believe that is. Yes, Tyson Davison. McLean drops it in. Davison trying to create something here. And going to get a push, I believe I heard Billings say. Red kick. Lincoln Mitchin. Cross field. Ball goes under. Xavier Hill's foot. Can't quite come up with it. Shot, shot, shot. 
throw in White. I think that was uh, Gabe Mitchell that got the head on it over there. Raiders come here to the near side. Here's McLean working against Rosenthal. Gets it by Rosenthal. Mitchett trying to fend off McLean. No, he was trying to fend off uh, Maddox Heiss. Number 22 for the Raiders. Middle of the field, turnaround. In there trying to get a foot on it, Shiloh Weiss. Ball cleared out by the defense, back up midfield. Jaden Baker over on the far side. Throw in red. Hazen not able to create a whole lot of offense yet. Let's see if they can get something going on this exchange. They don't. Raiders. Hazen battling back. I think we got a high kick there or something or other. Hopefully we'll have Coach Harry here for the second half. He can explain everything. Varsity girls still looking for their first win of the season. Got beat five zip here yesterday. People's Academy Wolves. Moore makes a save right in there was Cody Trudeau. As that ball bounced free for a moment, Cody's super quick. Moore drops it off. Couple of Raiders give chase over here. There's Rosenthal working against McLean. Ball is going to stay in. McLean gets by Rosenthal, looking to get it toward the middle of the field. Blocked out nicely by Lincoln. Mitchin, the junior. And now we will have what I consider to be the most exciting play in all of soccer, the corner kick. Kind of kicking it out of the hole down here. Or actually, that was some kind of other kick. That wasn't a corner kick. It was some type of other kick. Revard scoops. Booms one. Ray Guy-like punt. It's going to go out of bounds. And White will have the throw. Come here! Ray Guy, of course, longtime punter back in the 70s and 80s for the Oakland Raiders. Made famous by hitting the television monitors at the top of the Superdome in warm up. He was just fooling around. Said, hey, I think I can hit that, and uh, did. Tyler Rivard, go kick. Shiloh working against Mitchett. Long kick down through. Defense there first. Shiloh moving up the sideline. And there's a shoulder by Mitchett. And we saw Lincoln get a yellow card in his last game. Got to wonder if that'll happen again this game. Lincoln likes to play aggressive.
Free kick taken by Sean Butler. Moves across on the field, knocked down by the defense. Offense keeps it in. Davison looking to turn. McLean keeps it in. Butler looking inside. Looks outside for McLean. McLean cross. Nobody home. Nice idea, nice play. Hazen. Whistle there. Referee Brian Irwin with some words for Jaden Baker on the far side. Jaden got a little extracurricular with the ball after the whistle. <laughs> Couple of no-nonsense referees here today. Ball play back to Moore. Trudeau moves in. Middle of the field scrum. Far side. These guys pass extremely well. Shot wide. Twenty-five minutes left to go in the first half. U32 up one zip off the game by a uh, goal off of Noah Kopsko. Early, not even uh, like uh, 58 seconds in. They got that goal. Since then, uh, I would say U32 has controlled the ball more in our end than we've had it in their end. Uh, some really great passing out of these guys. Short. Choppy passes. Look for the open man. Takes a shot. Save Revard. Ball goes out. Revard keeps it out. Tyler Revard makes the save. Darn close to be a two-zip right there. Off the bobble. Revard recovered. Once again, ball up free. Revard takes that one up to the middle of the field. Drop pass in. Kick up. Drop back. U32 keeps it in. Some more. Middle of the field. Drop down nicely. Very fortunate for the Cats that there wasn't anybody there for the Raiders. Oh, yeah. 
Keeler falls down, comes up. Nice recovery. Got his feet tangled up. A.J. Moore. Punt here to the near side. Rosenthal. Lincoln Richard with the throw in. Rosenthal out, Fenton Meyer in for the Cats. Tyson, nice pass up ahead. Keeler trying to get a step on the defense. Can't do it. Turn, center of the field. Come on, Ray! Rada, defense comes up big again on that one. Knocked down nicely, Gabe Mitchett. Once again, the Raiders, though, threaten. Looking across, here's Rivard. Shiloh right there. Ready to grab that. Revert. Big punt. Davison might be able to get a break here. Get a foot on it. No. AJ Moore comes out. Ball just ahead of Tyson. Keeler. Trade and paint. With Quinn Olney here on the near side. Moore comes way out, knocks that one out. I believe we're going to have a corner. Now, now will we have the most exciting play in all of soccer? The corner kick. Ball in. Send the field back up high and back. Meyer plays that one over. Mitch it up. Drop back down. Cody Trudeau trying to keep it in. Can't do it. Defense back out again. Ball in. Riker. Well at. U32 continuing on the attack. Here's where you're bringing you live action from Hudson Fields, Heart of Vermont, Hazen Union High School, U32 Raiders playing your Hazen Union Wildcats. Lance Hall with the call for HCTV, channel 1080, www.hctv.us is where we're archiving everything. Sponsors today, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. They support Hazen Athletics, the Hardwick Village Restaurant, 472-5701, breakfast all day. And Calderwood Insurance, 472-5517. Service and protection since 1979. Leaf on camera and tech today. Do we have any viewers, Leaf? Of course, nobody really knew it was out there, so if you stumbled on us, you stumbled on us by chance. But happy to have you here. Anybody that is. A beautiful day for soccer. And thus far, this... Raider offense, the term I will use to describe it is surgical. The uh, short, precise, precise passes, they're just kind of slicing and dicing out here. Looking for the surgical strike. Oh, I could throw in a Queensryche reference. I think that's off the Rage for Order album. If I remember right. Meyer gets that one outside. Over there to challenge him, though, is uh, Maddox Heiss. 17-56 and ticking here in the first half. Raiders lead one zip on that early goal. 
Couple of nice saves by Rivard. Uh, we have not done a whole lot down at the other end in offense. Raiders, like I said, they've been surgical up here. Nice job, Quinn. And I will go with unyielding for the Raider defense. Just haven't been able to mount anything. For Hazen, for the offense, I will go with perplexing. I think they are perplexed as to what to do against this Raider defense. Mitchell working against the U32 player. And for our defense, I will go with the word fortuitous. They've played well, but I think they have also been a little fortuitous to not be down a couple more goals. U32 has just missed on a couple of opportunities. Ball ahead. Mitch it back. Once again, Cats come in with a record of one and one. U32, to the best of my knowledge, is two and one. At least that's what I found the other day when I looked up on their website. Good work, Gabe! Hey, that's how we win the ball. Let's go! Ball up ahead, out of bounds, white throw. Jaden Baker and Cole Hayes, two number fours, gunning out there. Quick kick up ahead. Ball in the middle, knocked out. U32 back. Tyler's going to grab that one. We're going to have a whistle. And call in the box. I didn't see who it was on, but we're going to have a PK. See someone raising their hand over there. Was that? Uh, I can't tell. It looked like it. Looks like it could be Riker. I think who raised his hand. Whether that meant he was guilty or not, but the other way, PK. Rebound. Can't come up with it. Finn O'Donnell converts on the PK to put the Raiders up to zip. I'm hearing the crowd saying something about a handball in the box on the defense, so. Unfortuitous in that instance. So with 14:20 left to go in the first half, Raiders up to zip. See if the Cats can get something, but uh, we haven't had a whole lot of offense so far. Just off size. Leaf, do you agree with the term surgical to describe these guys? 
I mean, they are precise out there. The other thing I'm hearing is they talk to each other a lot on the field as well. I mean, our guys talk too, but these guys, it's like having a team of coaches out there on the field. Not a yellow card. As Jaden Baker got a little elbowy over there. And he is going to get a yellow. I'm not surprised. Um, got a chatting to for playing the ball after the whistle, and now with something like that, I think Jaden's got to discipline himself a little bit more. Ooh, that's Reed Keeler drops back out onto the field. Now we got to watch for the red card. Once again, both these referees definitely no nonsense. Roland Billings and Brian Irwin. And I believe that was Billings with the yellow card on. Jade Baker. Reynas. Control. Pass over here, near side. Luke Page. Working right in the middle. Turn. Shot high. Goal kick. High. Floats down. Defense in. Rare misplay by a U32 player on the kick. Try and move the ball up. See what we can do. Turn. We're actually going to get a shot on goal here. Defense right there to boot it out. He's not able to get the foot on the ball to even put a shot on more. Best chance we've had in quite a while. I mean, Moore's defense isn't even really letting him touch the ball right now. Throw in red, 10.45 on the clock. Raiders up two zip in the first half. Courtesy of a goal early by Noah Kopsko and the PK by Finn O'Donnell. Nice. X Man trying to make something happen for the offense. Here's Gabe Mitchett inside. Nothing there. Mitchett puts the head on it. Tries to settle down. Mitchett, far side of the field. I think that's Gavin Stratton over there. Gavin trying to move inside. A lot of white jerseys right there. A wall of white jerseys. And Meyer calls for the takedown. Fortunate it didn't happen, the, happen in the box as the U32 player had a step on him. I don't think it was anything malicious, just sort of going for it. Either way, U32 with a free kick. 
blocked down by the defense. Shot up again, high. And that one will roll into the trees. Center of the field. Riker Willett clears that one into the bench. Drop. McLean taking his time. In the field. Cole Hayes. Turns. I don't think this is Hayes with the ball anymore. I can't see a number. Played back and up and over here on the near side. That's Luke Page. That one's cleared out by Mitch. It kept in by McLean, though. Turn. Shot in offside. Just barely offsides. Had the step, but unfortunately it was the step that led to the offsides call. Come on, Reed. Revert. Alex Keen, I believe that was on the far side, called for the bump. 7.35 left to go in the first half. Cats looking to get Claw back into this thing. Get a goal here and just cut it down to 2-1. More misplays goes over. Nobody there to capitalize for the Cats, though. Can't say the sun got in his eyes. Sun's behind the clouds. Just straight up misplay. So A.J. Moore fortuitous now. Corner kick. Whoa! No call as Cody Trudeau was going in for the ball. No call. Raider fans are speechless. He's keeping it in. A lot of white jerseys. McLean, a one-man wrecking crew up through there. Over here on the near side, looking to turn up field. That was Finn O'Donnell. Kick. Mitchell. Nice, Dylan! Cats with the kick once again. Can't say they haven't at least had it down at this end of the field. Moore comes out, skies up. Shows he's not afraid to do it after that last misplay. Going to go out and try it again. Why not? Get right back on the horse and ride. At least he's getting to touch the ball now a couple times as well. Raiders shot on side, just wide, just wide. White throw. Not 
And I'll tell you, in this first half, despite the fact that we're down two zip and very lucky not to be down four or five zip, this has been an entertaining game to watch. I mean, this U32 team is just fantastic out there. Our boys have hung tough. Shot, score! And no, is the referee waving it off? Referee's waving it off. Not sure exactly what happened, but the referee ball went in, everybody clapped, and the referee waved it off. I did not see what or why, but for some reason, Brian Irwin waved that goal off. Cross, header, save. We are seeing a clinic in soccer out here right now. McLean with the kick. Drops it over, drop back. McLean. Amazing how we can have defensive players right there, and the ball just like rolls through right to the exact foot of the Raider player. But really, for all intents and purposes, our defense playing well. We gave up that one quick goal early. The other goal was on a PK, so. Um, ooh, can't really fault anything out here for the, for the defense a whole lot. Other than the fact that they gotta be getting gassed by now. We have played a lot of defense in this half. A lot of, a lot of defense. Oh, beautiful. There you go, boys. Riker will let trying to clear that one out. There we go. Revard, go kick. Drops down. Tyson with the trap. Can't get anywhere. Mitchett working against Shiloh. Shiloh steals it away. Stepping in front was Gabe Mitchett. One minute left to go in the first half. Shot on. Blocked down. Defense just desperate to get it out of here before they give up a third goal here with less than a minute to play in the half. Defense outstanding and thwarting those last couple of shots, but man, we are under some pressure back here. 40 seconds. McLean looks. Chest pass. Looking over there on the far side, right under the foot of the Hazen defensive player. Revard, gonna have to punt it high and far. We got 15 seconds. Gonna have to move quick and it's not gonna happen. Now I guess we just gotta hope that they don't score with 10 seconds left to go here and half. And I think that's gonna just about end the first half with the U32 Raiders, courtesy of an early goal, 58 seconds in by Noah Kopsko. And the conversion on the penalty kick by Finn O'Donnell to give them the 2-0 lead. Really controlling a lot of the uh, play here in the first half. Their offense, once again, surgical. Just absolutely surgical on our end of the field. Um, Lance Hall with the call for HCTV Channel 1080, streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Leaf on camera and tech. Our sponsors today, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. They support Hazen Athletics. 
the Hardwick Village Restaurant, 472-5701. Breakfast all day. And Caldwell Insurance, 472-5517. Service and protection since 1979. We'll see you at the start of the second half. But I don't know what... And welcome back to Hudson Fields Hazen Union High School in Hardwick, Vermont. As your U uh, your Hazen Union Wildcats taking on the U32 Raiders here today, the Raiders with the 2-0 lead, courtesy of an early goal, just 58 seconds into the game by Noah Kopsko, and then the conversion on the penalty kick by Finn O'Donnell later in the first half gives the Raiders the first half. The term I have used so far has been surgical. For the Raiders. Lance Hall with the call for HCTV Channel 1080 on your cable dial and streaming worldwide. We are streaming now. We had a little little glitch there in the first half, but streaming at www.hctv.us. Leaf on camera, and we have Coach Harry. Harry Bissett, the Hazen Union Lady Cats coach, over here to talk to us. And you were just filling us in on some very information, very interesting information on the U32 coach. Yes. Mike Noyce. Yes. Uh former Hazen varsity boys coach and my coach when I was a player at Hazen a long time ago. Couldn't have been all that long. 2005, 2006. Right, okay. okay. But, uh, yeah, the term I have used for the, uh, for the Raider offense is surgical. Just pinpoint precise passing. And I think the Hazen offense is a little perplexed, and the Hazen defense has been fortuitous to not be down a few more goals. They have played well, but they have played a lot of defense in the first half. And the, uh, I can't remember the, the word I came up with for the Wildcat defense, but it was it was good. They're really, really good. I mean, they didn't even let their, their goalie, uh, A.J. Moore, touch the ball for a lot of the first half. So I'm going to be extremely interested to get your take on these teams. More kick out, high spinner, middle of the field. Taken down. And I'll tell you, Harry, a little bit of trivia of my own. When we first moved up here to uh, Vermont back in 1970, we lived in East Callis for four years. I went to uh, Callis Elementary. Uh, we moved up to Hardwick at the beginning of my fifth grade year. If we had stayed there, I would have gone to school at U32. Well, we're happy to have you here with the Wildcats. We moved to Hardwick instead in the fall of 74, and the rest is history. You mentioned the strong U32 defense. It seems like that's their key. The couple touches that I saw their goalie have in the first half, I missed most of it, but it didn't seem like he was very short with his hands. Yeah, he bobbled one, uh, misplayed another. There's a kick Ooh. in. We're going to have... No? I'm not sure what he's indicating. We have a yellow card on Baker. He went up high with the kick. Was that it? Uh, so it looks like that was a second yellow card. Yes, Jaden got one in the first half. A red card now. So Hazen will play with 10 men the rest of the match. Wow, and that happens uh, I, so a minute and 21 into the second half. My, my guess of what the ref is calling is that he was indicating that it was a dangerous kick, um, which usually can result in a indirect kick if there's contact. It didn't look like there was contact, but I think the ref was frustrated because he felt like the goalie would have had control. Jaden looked like he was going in for a 50-50 ball, uh, but sometimes ref will protect the goalies a lot more than other positions. Okay, Coach Allison Parity talking to, and these have been a couple of no-nonsense refs, I'll tell you that, Eric. They have uh, had really good control of this game. <clears throat> Jaden drew a warning in the first half for kicking the ball after the whistle. He got a talking to by referee Brian Irwin, who's the same one who made that call. Mm -hmm. He also drew a yellow card for getting a little elbowy right here at center field and taking player down. That's drew his first yellow card. So he's sort of been on their radar this game. And sometimes it's all you need for the wrong ref to put you in the book and send you off the field. So Jaden Baker will sit the rest of the game and Hazen plays a man short for the remaining 38 minutes and 39 seconds of this half. Yes. That's going to be tough. 
And now we have the always scintillating goal kick, or is this just a free kick? Uh, so because it was a caution, it'll be a, uh, it's a free kick. Can direct kick for a dangerous player. Over here on the near side, that's Gavin Stratton clearing that one out. Shiloh. Shiloh Weiss, center. Looked like Rory over there on the far side, Roy McLean. He's been all over the field today. And what could have been a deficit cutting goal turns out to be a red car, which costs us a man. Let's see if the Cats can bounce back. Shiloh Weiss working against Riker Willett. Willett goes down. And we're going to give the Wildcats the free kick. Sponsors for our game today, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. They support Hazen Athletics, the Hardwickville Restaurant, 472-5701, breakfast all day, and Calderwood Insurance, 472-5517, service and protection since 1979. Leaf on camera and tech. Got the stream going, Lance Hall with the call, along with Harry Bissett. Feel free to chime in with anything and everything, Harry. Uh, it looks like U32 has been doing a good job using the width of the field. It seems like they do a good job. Ooh, just missing on the cross. Just missing. We've seen that happen a number of times. That's why I'm saying the Hazen defense is fortuitous. I mean, we could easily be down 5-6 zip right now. A millisecond here, another step there, and the Raiders would be putting goals in in droves. And on the PK, low into the corner. My favorite spot to shoot. There you go. It'll be interesting to see if uh, Coach Parody wants Hazen to test the goalkeeper here, to see if he's weak, and then if he bobbles it to try and tap it in. We have see seen if him. they've got another set play that they've got planned. We have seen him uh, bobble a couple out here, so anything can happen. There we go, right on, Ooh. off the post. Ooh, beautiful goal. And it went in. Uh, we call off the crossbar, off the post that holds the net up in the back and then bounced out of the goal. So it crossed the line. Okay. That's all it needs to do. As soon as the entire ball crosses the entire line, it's a goal, and it doesn't matter where it ends up. And that was Lincoln Mitchett taking that kick, yep. doing just what you called, testing the goalie. Well, he beat the goalie. <laughs> <laughs> so the Hazen offense, fortuitous in that instance. Yes. But either way, we'll take it. Lincoln Mitchett's got the goal. Uh, to Lincoln's credit, even a very short-handed goalie would have had a hard time stopping that. He's very well placed in the top corner. And just like that, the Cats are back into this game, 2-1 with 35-55. Playing hard. Once again, they'll be playing with a man down for the rest of this half after Jaden Baker drew the red card early on a what was deemed a dangerous kick. We'll say. Tyson looking up ahead. Gabe Mitchett can't get there. Defense in front of him. Dylan. Dylan Hinchcliffe working against Mitchett. Hinchcliffe pushes it out. Throw in. Mitchett looks for Reed Keeler. Ball bouncing everywhere. Mitchett trying to corral it down, trying to get the turn. Working against Ben Clark. Come on, 
Elliot Rosenthal. Goes down low. Raiders. Once again, Rosenthal clears it back up, back in. Finn O'Donnell keeping that out. Now the Wildcats turn. Cats looking to mount some pressure here. Oh, he was looking for Cody. Cody Trudeau Tyson was open there for a second. Shot on high. And that ball's not going to stop until it gets down to Blackbridge. Shot into the woods. Alex Keane gives chase on the far end. It's the other thing I've noticed, Harry, with their passing, it's like we have players there, but they find this lane, this line, and almost channels. catch everybody flat-footed. Pass into the channels. Yeah. That's the, the, the common terminology. But if so, if you have a back four, you have three spaces in between, and if you can find a player that can drift into those channels and pass the ball in before, then you can really wreak a lot of havoc. Uh, on a I'll tell you, they've they've done it with precision in this game. I can imagine some of the drills that Coach Noise has had his boys <laughs> doing. <laughs> you would be privy to a few of them. Yes. <laughs> Mitchell clears it up once again. AJ Moore out. Butler, center of the field in. It's McLean cleared out by Mitchett. Keeler with the settle. Looks at Gabe. Ball drops back. There's Tyson moving up the middle. Stolen away. Kale. Shot on, save Rivard, ball loose, down in the middle. Raiders looking to get the turn. Get a defensive man up there, finally. Ben Clark, working against Gabe Mitchett. Sean Butler, over on the far side, drops it down. To a player whose number I can't see, and this is going to be, oh, Riker Willette. Chips that one out and saves what a, would have been a sure goal for U32. And that would have been, I don't know if I would have quite called it a dagger, but that would have been tough. It would have been deflating, certainly. Deflating, yeah, great word. Hazen, though, I, I'll give him credit. Uh, the offense playing a little better in this half. They're strong good passes together. Uh, from the last game I saw last week, uh, they, they're really controlling the ball a lot better and finding the feet of the other players more, uh, as opposed to sending some hopeful balls sort of ahead of people. They've uh, gained some composure, and it's unfortunate they're down to 10. Otherwise, I think this could be a fruitful second half for them. But they're not out of it yet. Absolutely, plenty of time left. 30 minutes left to go in the half. Still anybody's ball game, as I like to say. Well, that drops up, pitch it down. Cleared out by Phineas Lowe. Sean Butler, center of the field. Tied up with Tyson. Butler wants a call against Tyson, has some words for him. Oh, 
Long kick. Settled down by U32. Shin to shin right there. That hurt. You hear that pop all the way up here. Ben Clark looking at the center of the field. Cleared out. Cleared back in. Shiloh. We're working against Fenton Meyer. Ben Clark in there as well. Clark. Referee Brian Irwin correcting the throw in. Right there, right through it. Nobody there for the Cats offense. Moore. Center of the field, Rosenthal. Got a head on it. Meyer, cross. Nobody there but the substitute looking to come in. Throw in White. Chunked out by Lincoln Midget. That is, that is for sure a chunk. I would agree with no, you. Ch no chip there, that's a chunk. Sacrificing. Rosenthal over there. Playing much like his older brother. Julius. The wall of defense. Player I really miss on defense for us is Freddie the Hip. Larson. Oh man, did he throw a hip? Shot on wide. <laughs> Goal kick. Tyson plays that one off his chest. Kept back in by U32. White throw. Right here on the near side. Ben Clark. Over. Phineas Lowe playing that one up. Turn. Shot on. High. By Ben Clark. Ben Clark, just a sophomore. They, they, they have some tall, rangy guys out there for U32 as well. I was noticing that when I was down on the field earlier. It was the same thing. It seems like both their outside backs uh, are quite tall. And, they both and there's a goal by Shiloh from way outside. Just beat Revard with a hard shot. Ball came out, trapped it down, put the shot on. Revard caught kind of flat-footed back there. And we have a yellow card for celebrating. What is this, the NFL? I don't know. Is that? I don't know. Maybe he said a cuss word or something. Shiloh's moving off. Taking off. I guess we go with excessive celebration, which I, I don't know. Unless <laughs> the ref heard something that the yeah. ref said, but yeah, I'm not what, sure. What what he may have said on the field, who knows? But uh, regardless, goal still stands. Three one Raiders. Off the uh, shot from way outside the box, outside the what do you call that circle thing there, Harry? Bubble. The, outside the bubble. I don't know if that's. He what's was called. practically at the top of the bubble when he took that shot. I'll call it the blue line for hockey. Yeah. Uh, and uh, then we're gonna get a 
dangerous play, I think, right there. A high kick or whatever. Cody Trudeau going up high. That line is there to ensure that on a penalty kick, all players are uh, equal distance away from the person taking the penalty kick or okay. from the spot of the ball. So that when you're crashing afterwards, uh, no one has any damage. Well, that's where he took the shot off. And like I said, Tyler was back there just kind of flat footed, never had a chance at it. And up ahead, Tyler out to save. Ball bobbled out. Lucky there. Playing footsie with fate right there, Leaf. Keeler. You can get the turn. Shot on just wide. Moore got the hand on it. Kept in. AJ got enough of a hand on it to knock it wide. And again, he's kind of tall, rangy. I think he used every inch of his height and arms to get that one out. I was kind of up close to him as I walked behind the goal before the uh, game when I went over to get lineups. Big kid. Twenty-four forty left to go in the match. Raiders lead three-one. Riker Willett. U32 beat us to the ball on that one. See what happens. Gavin Strett running a mile over there. He's a freshman. He can run long and hard like that. <laughs> I'd be about halfway there. <laughs> Pull a hammy or something and that'd be it. Mitchett doing his best to interrupt this U32 uh, defense. I was going to say, we're going to have a call there. Can't really do that right in front of the referee and expect to get away with it. No, and this, the referee on the near side has been calling it uh, pretty tight yes. for both teams. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'll say. We've seen these referees call it tight, evenly. Both teams. Kick across. Stratton gets the foot back. Dan DeGroslier tried to play that one. Went off the side of his foot. Ouellette back. DeGroslier trying again. Knocked back out by U32. Coach Allison Parody in her first year, of course it wasn't that long ago you were in your first year. Have you had a chance to conference with her much about her experience thus far? We've been uh, we've been checking in uh, before some practices and talking a little bit, but uh, no, she seems pretty confident, pretty comfortable, and uh, Hazen's playing well. It's, I think, the I think they're really missing that extra person on the field right now, but they're stringing together some uh, fruitful chances and they're getting some good passing together. I'll give them that. The offense seems to have sort of sparked up a little bit here in the second half. It was fairly anemic in the first, but uh, they made more work a little bit more back there in goal this half. Ben Clark working against Davison. Or no, that's uh, Meyer. Clark and Meyer go shoulder to shoulder and go down.
Happy to welcome anybody and everybody that could possibly be streaming this game. This is our first attempt at, at streaming soccer live. So welcome aboard to HCTV. Corner kick, the most exciting play in all of soccer, Harry. Revert comes all the way out. Shot on. Save Revert. I saw, I saw a lot of ball rolling around back there on that one. It's my least favorite play in soccer <laughs> as, as, as a coach. I can believe it. I can believe it. Cody Trudeau. I'm looking at Gabe Mitchett. He was trying to get it to Tyson. Mitchett, he scored from outside once. Why not take another one? More. With a lot of time back there. It's almost like there's too much time, you know? The ball's coming, ball's coming. A cheek clencher, if there ever was one. <laughs> when you got that much time to wait on that ball. Clark. Look at that pass. Knocked out. Mitch it down. Mitch it again. He's all over. Tell you. Hitting the channels, as you say, Harry. I'm going to have to remember that one. Gabe Mitchett. Playing hard against Phineas Lowe. Sean Butler up ahead. Revert out. Wow. Rosenthal. Goes over Trudeau. Ball up. Tyson going at it with uh, Is that Hinchcliffe back, Dylan? Once again, this is Lance Hall with the call for HCTV channel 1080. Streaming worldwide and archived at www.eztv.us. Leaf on camera and tech. Harry Bissett, my co-commentator today. Always good to have you here, Harry. Your soccer knowledge. Always fun to be here. Always great to lean on. Sponsors, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. They support Hazen Athletics, the Hardwick Village Restaurant. 472-5701, breakfast all day, and call the one insurance. 472-5517, service and protection since 1979. Hazen Union Wildcat soccer action. Boys come in with a record of 1-1. One one. Won their opener here against Fairfax. Lost at Harwood. U32, to the best of my knowledge, comes in with a record of 2-1. and one. That's what I got off their website the other night. If they played or not, I am not positive. I don't think they have. So I believe their record is two and one. I will stand corrected if I'm not. More. Outside. Trying to run up the sideline here now. Man, 57 channels and there's something going to be on here. Butler. Working against Rosenthal. Rosenthal brings it up. Well, that's long throw in. Back of the head was Phineas Lowe. Raiders on the attack once again. Kale Humkey in the middle. Here's Butler over on the outside to Finn O'Donnell. Finn O'Donnell cross, moving in. Boy, we've seen that happen so many times in this game. Just a step off. Nice, Nice, Nice. Shot from outside. 
Rivard, scoop save. The punt. High. Boomer down here. Low. Puts the head on that. Butler. Far side, I believe that's Cole Hayes. Chipped it. And what are what are you seeing out here, Harry? Uh, speaking to the driving to the corner, crossing in, it seems like U32 is doing a good job possessing the ball in the middle. But then on their counterattacks, they they have their. They started with a back four, I believe, and they're having these two wing backs, which are what the outside backs are called. Shot on, save, Rebar. Look that was O'Donnell with the shot. Um, so the wing back position is similar to a fullback, but uh, you start um, as a fullback, and then you kind of carry the ball up the field. And it seems like both outside backs for U32 are very tall and very capable of dribbling the ball up. Um, and so that seems to be where they're overloading the Hazen defense and then finding those driving balls across. And, and as you said, it's created a lot of fruitful opportunities for U32 and Hazen's been uh, fortuitous to keep them out. Mitchett tries another long one. Hubbard, that one goes just high. He was almost aiming for the same spot. More. Not quite enough dip on the ball. But it's floated a little bit too much at the end. Just over the top. More up, but the ball went over the crossbar. Fourteen twenty left to go in the match. Hazen down three one, playing a man short, but have played well despite being down that man. Uh, we have that. We have a full roster out there, and uh, could be interesting. The word I will use since they have lost uh, Jaden is heroic. They have played heroically. They have not given up, which is good to see. Exactly. They're, they're out there all fighting hard and working together. Steadfast. The other thing, uh, like you, I don't know if you just picked up on that, Harry. These the U thirty two players communicate well on the field. You know, it's yes. like having a team of coaches out there. Yes. Is, is that something that Mike Noyes preaches, or? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, our team was never very good at it. I don't think we ever lived up to communicating as much as he would have hoped. But uh, these U thirty two boys are doing better. Yeah, we, I've heard a lot of chatter. A lot of pep talk, a lot of coaching out there from this. It makes it so much easier for yourself. And it's, it's the easiest, it seems like the easiest thing to do. And it makes it so much easier for you and your teammates. But for some reason at this age, it's just a hard thing to pick up. But if you can get comfortable and do it, it makes it, it makes you such a stronger team. Well, that with the throw headed down by the U32 player. Luke Page gets it over. Coming up through, that is uh, Kale or Kyle. I can't remember if it's Kale or Kyle. I'm sorry. I think it was Kale. Fighting their way in here. Lincoln. And Trudeau gets knocked back, and we're going to have the call. Ever seen a team of vicious? Yeah, we're getting close. Just animals. Every play. <laughs> these are children. Who are these kids? Wait, wait, wait. Especially that little one. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. We're going to have some subs. Go, go, go. 
Well, that's going to have the throw. So you guys have a, the Lady Cats have a bit of a break. You played uh, yesterday. Now you have eight days off. You have suffered a couple of shutouts. Is the, is the break a help or a hurt? Big help. Big help. Uh, we played very physical game Saturday, very physical game yesterday. Um, and so everyone without many subs. A chance to rest, recuperate, yes. get some extra reps in and, and practice once you have rested. Yes. And, uh, and hopefully be ready for a home game next Tuesday against Enosburg. Yeah, and Enosburg is usually a very tough team. Are they tough again this year? They are. Um, I was talking to the Fairfax coach, um, and she was saying they lost a couple of key seniors um, that really seem to be the glue of their team. And so it doesn't sound like they're quite as strong as they were last year. Last year they were a very good team. Uh, I think they were undefeated in the regular season. Mm. Um, and so it's... We'll, we'll go in optimistically and get as much out of the game as we can. Uh, well, hopefully, weather permitting, we will be here to cover it. We'll Once again, so. that's next Tuesday, the 21st, as your Hazen Union Lady Cats right. will be hosting the Enosburg Hornets. This coming Friday, it'll be your Wildcat Boys hosting the North Country Falcons. Right now, they're playing the U32 Raiders. And uh, despite being down 3 1, I. I Give them credit in the second half for playing so much better. Butler almost looked like he was lining up to take that one. There's Mitchett. Gets it up to Gabe Mitchett. Mitchett to Mitchett, the M&M Express out here. Time ticking down for the Cats, though. Down two goals. Moore rolls that one over. We've seen Moore use a lot more of those rollers out to his defense, whereas we are more of a punt, punt, punt. Um, but I guess if you've got the defensive players that can carry the ball up, like you said, right. you can do that. They're so technically um, able. Sound, it, yes. And uh, they're certainly possessing the ball in the defensive and middle third um, and the offensive third. But their focus is on possession. So... You've seen Hayes a few times try to clear, up, clear it up out of the back, and it's just gone right to the chest of U32 players. Mm. And so that's what uh, they're aiming to avoid by just playing it to feet. We've got a player down behind us here in the penalty box. I cannot tell who that is, and I did not see anything happen because it was away from the play. Um, can't get a number just yet. It looks like it could be Riker. Willette. I think I recognize him by his cleats. So we will see what uh, is happening with Riker here. We saw the shin guard come off. Don't know if he took one in the shin or not. So by by playing, as you said, I'm, I'm just I'm just going to pick your brain here for a moment. Forgive me if I ask stupid questions. Nope. By rolling the ball out and playing the possession game as well, not only are you gaining possession more and, and keeping the ball away from your opponent, you're also running time off the clock. Yes, um, and so that's another good observation. U32 not in a position where they need a goal. Uh, it's just possess, 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 and the clock is your best friend. Um, and if you U32 can just play keep away for eight minutes and five seconds and go to three and one. They'll take it. We'll give, a, uh, we'll give the full read to our sponsors right now because we really want to thank all of our sponsors for each and every game that we do. Once again, you're watching Hazen Union Wildcat Soccer, Varsity Soccer Live here from Hudson Fields as we as the first attempt at streaming live as it looks like Riker's going to be able to get off now. Eight minutes left to go in the second half. Cats down 3-1. 
our sponsors, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. They support Hazen Athletics, a full line of Arctic snowmobiles, all-terrain vehicles as well. they got snapper lawnmowers. If you're looking to play in the snow, you're looking to play in the dirt, see Buffalo Mountain Power Sports. The Hardwick Village Restaurant, 472-5701. Breakfast all day. I will have scrambled eggs, bacon, toast, and hash browns. How about you, Harry? Uh, I'll have a veggie omelet. All right. With bacon. Excellent. And Calderwood Insurance, 472-5517. Service and protection since 1979. Give Mike Gothier a call. He will insure anything and everything that you need insurance on. And I'm sure there's things you don't think you need insurance on that you do that he can create a policy for. And as always, we thank all of our sponsors for supporting Hayes and Union Athletics. We could not be us without you. Leaf on camera and tech. Wearing his sombrero again today. Coach Harry Bissett, Hayes and Union Lady Cats. Coach Harry Bissett on commentary as well with me. Lance Hall with the call. Eight minutes left to go in the match. I would think the Cats are going to have to really start putting some pressure on, particularly with the way the Raiders are playing. What would you, what what would be a strategy, Harry, for them to, besides the obvious, put the ball in the net? Um. So, because their outside backs are overlapping, it leaves them a little more vulnerable on the outside. So, if you can kind of play like a turtle in its shell and play more defensively and absorb that pressure. There's not a lot of time left, but uh, if you can absorb the pressure and let draw their players up, then you, it's much harder with 10 men, obviously. But if you can exploit the outside channels or even kind of have a decoy run to draw the only two center backs that are left out to the side or out of position, then it can give you another chance to try and get a fast break and get one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Um, have we seen a one-on-one -on -one, uh, from Hazen? Not in this game, no. no I, their defense has, the, the, the Raiders' defense has been swarming. There. If, if you can get one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, he looks a little timid, um, yeah. so it might be a chance to uh, get one in. But, again, that's with only six minutes left, it's kind of just yeah. get the ball up and play as hard as you can. I think if we could get you know Tyson or Cody in there, and uh, you know, get in close with a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, I think you know anything could happen. But uh, after the success from the free kick, uh, you can also look to try to just get the ball up into a similar range and then try to draw a foul. Um, <laughs> because they have been t calling a tight game and the uh, defense has been fairly very fair, but also very physical. Yeah. Um, and it, you, if you're a very clever striker, you can figure out how to draw a foul and then try and take the free kick and try and exploit uh, some gameplay that way. With six minutes left, time to put the ball in the net. We're going to have a right. Regardless. But, uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see how first year coach Allison Parody plays it. Turn around. And the other thing, Riker is a, a force back there on defense with him out. Yeah, it looks like uh, Reed Keeler's dropped and become kind of a left back on the outside. Which, when you're looking to score a goal, it seems like he's been a key part of the midfield. So that'll be a huge dent. Uh, and hopefully Riker is able to return. If not today, then by Friday. Right. Now, North Country, are they D2 still? I'm not sure. You know, it's a big school up there in Newport. I remember going up there eons ago when Cody, I think, was a freshman for like a scrimmage or something. But uh, they'll be hosting the North Country Falcons on Friday. Quinn only cross right there. Rory McLean gets it up to uh, Humke. There's a shot blocked down by Rosenthal. Cole Hayes was looking to put that right on Revi, but Rosenthal right out there. The little wall of defense.
Cats looking to attack. Trudeau drops it back. Keeler lifts one. Looks in the middle. U32 there. Balls out down to Groslier with a throw. Groslier throw. Mitchett drops it inside. Here's Trudeau. Trudeau can burn, but uh, Humke right there with him. Seems like no matter how high and far we try to put it. He's in free kick. All right. Let's see if we can convert something here with 310 and ticking. Mitchell will get another shot at it. Or is he going to take it or is Reed going to take it? Looks like Reed is going to take it. So this can go directly on goal. Yes, direct kick fouls a direct kick. I thought it was around the top of the bubble, but. Backed it out a little bit. Keeler puts one on, just high. And I would say right now, barring something, anything short of a true miracle, two minutes and 30 seconds left, I do not see. U32 giving up two goals. But we will give the Cats credit in the second half for playing hard. They went down a man early. First minute? First uh, minute and 21 seconds, I think. Into this half, uh, went down a man, and they have played tough. And really, you know, they gave up the one goal early, the one goal on the PK, and the one goal that caught Tyler flat-footed was uh, Finn O'Donnell scoring on the PK, Shiloh. Weiss shot from outside here in the second, and Noah Kopsko. 52 seconds into the game. So, but again, they had a lot of chances to put a lot more goals on here as yeah. well, just with the way they've played. So we'll, we'll use the word fortuitous for Hazen. Most of the play has been in uh, Hazen's half of the field, but yes. Hazen's had, they've put good chances and good offense together, so. Yep, second half, they definitely played offense a lot better than they did the first half. One minute left to play in the game. It's so, so I, you know, it's a loss, but you take from this a lot of learning, yeah. I think. A and, lot to go uh, from. And you can stand pretty tall that you, you played a man down. Yeah. And basically held him to one goal. Well, to, to tie the half, it, it's right. um, at this point, it looks like yeah. it'll end. Uh, so for, to play a man down and be 1-1 for yeah. the second half, it's... Against a team like this, yep. Definitely. Not, not ideal. Not ideal, but add the uh, points up at the end of the season. But yes. um, it, it's still a place to build from, and hopefully, build their confidence uh, going into Friday. Clock ticks down. We fired out. Shot high, and that's going to end the game. And it is the U32 Raiders beating the Hazen Union Wildcats by a score of 3-1. to one. Goals for the Raiders scored by Finn O'Donnell, Shiloh Weiss, and Noah Kopsko. Lance Hall with the call for HCTV Channel 1080 streaming worldwide at www.hctv.us. Sponsors today, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, Hard of Village Restaurant, Calderwood Insurance, Leaf on Camera, and Tech. Harry Bissett over here. Harry, once again, thank you very much for coming over. Yes, sir. Always entertaining and informative to get to chat with you over here. I want to thank anybody who might have picked up on the stream today. We'll see you on Friday. Until then, live every moment, love every day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>